I welcome in. I know a lot of you are excited for Saints Row. Right now we're going to dive deep into all of the different stuff that we know about Saints Row so far. It does very much come out on 23rd of August 2022, which is in a few months from now. Now originally this game was slated to come out in February 2022, so we're very much expecting the new August release date of 23rd of August to definitely be something that they're going to stick to. There's a bunch of different platforms that Saints Row is of course going to be on, including PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and also on PC, but only via the Epic Game Store. Now there's also a bunch of other stuff that I'm going to talk about in this video in terms of features and things that we know, but I want to go over some broad details first. Now I don't know how many of you remember, but in Saints Row 4, you couldn't do a lot of the co-op stuff um, in the game relative to before where you could do everything in co-op whereas in Saints Row 4 you couldn't do the main missions. Luckily in this new Saints Row we are going to be going back to co-op for everything which is very much appreciated and goes back to the soul of how the game should be in my opinion. Now of course we've had a few different trailers which have told us some stuff so far. Definitely the Saints Row dev team have tried to highlight certain things and downplay certain things as well. We know that a lot of people have not been very happy with the kind of like uh, move away from like uh, like kind of like a uh, fun gangster vibe towards more of a like hipster San Francisco kind of thing going on and a lot of people really were not very happy about that but people seem to have settled down about that especially because I think the devs have tried to stray away from that kind of image of the game by talking a bit more about other characters other than the main ones. Now talking about characters, your main character, the person that you play, the player character, is very much customizable along with any car that you own as well. And that again is a return to the franchise favorites. Another thing that Saints Row 4 definitely did miss out on is having for example layered clothing, which is coming back in this game as well. And likewise, we're gonna have a lot of different uh, car customizations in order to make the experience to us a bit more unique. The Saints Row dev team seems to be very happy about this and it's something that I've seen them try to really prioritize talking about, which is a bit interesting because we haven't seen them talk too much about the story actually. Um, but definitely it should hopefully be crazy and fun. That's kind of what we expect, nothing too serious. Uh, we do also know that the city of uh, Saints Row isn't just going to be like the main city, it's also the surrounding area. So you'll be able to travel to the mountains and stuff and uh, explore some of the wider areas surrounding the city. Whereas before in previous franchises, I believe it was just the city. There are 15 different districts and within each of those districts, there's going to be one of three enemy factions which are controlling those districts and of course you can fight with those in order to control the territories and it's very likely as well that you're going to have to defend those territories from the opposition or at least that's what we're expecting. These different factions are also going to feel both distinct in terms of style and in terms of community and the kind of like culture of the different gangs within each of these districts. Apparently depending on what district you're in and who's controlling it will have an impact on how the district feels, like how people are going about their day. And so if you're in one territory, there may be certain uh, activities that the NPCs are predicated towards doing, and then in another district with another controlled gang, they might be doing something entirely different. Of course as well, this is partially going to be based as well, of course, if you're in a sandy kind of area, where there's like more of a cowboy kind of thing going on you would expect of course generally speaking regardless of the faction a lot of the more like um, normal NPCs which aren't tied to a faction to be doing um, their thing regardless and it's going to be based on the area so if they're in a high rise business area of course they're going to have um, suits on. And so when you enter this city with all of these factions you do start as a small gang of I believe four people and the idea of the game is to essentially build yourself up 
build your criminal empire into a formidable gang in order to control territory, obviously get power and probably unlock more missions and of course get money in order to buy new cars or whatever you want to. Uh, so specifically there are three different factions, one of them is a high tech military strategic type of faction and they're going to have large weaponry and they're also going to have patience and tactics when it comes to you know having trained assassin assassins working for them and that's kind of the gang that we're expecting from the martial gang in saints row we've also got the traditional gang which is called los panteros and that is going to be you know brute force strength Kind of like a gang cars. They kind of remind me of those 80s ones which bounce up and down, if you know what I'm talking about. Of course as well, this faction is very much about melee. You know, things like sledgehammers and uh, rock hard fists are things that we can expect from this faction. The last one that we have is the Idols. This is considered it's a slightly strange bunch of individuals. They're chaotic, anarchists, and they see themselves as the new wild order, usually adorning pink clothing and strange helmets, frequent lack of shots. And so this gang isn't really skilled fighters, but there are a lot of them and they'll be sticking together. So expect to be swarmed when you're fighting the Idols. So when we first get to the city, as I kind of already alluded to, you start off as the boss, a custom character which will team up with some new friends in order to try to take over the city, bit by bit. The main reason for creating this expansive and uh, ambitious criminal empire is actually to originally pay off student debt, of course. So Saints Row is essentially meant to be a reboot, which means that not only is it going to be a new group in a new city, it also means that they've essentially retconned any of the old lore associated with the Saints Row series. The only similarity in terms of story between this and the old Saints Row games is that both are of course the gang is called The Saints. This game is entirely unique and new in terms of story. Nothing is uh, the same. This is al almost like a parallel universe. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that we won't see old characters. It could very much be that we see old characters, but they could be reimagined and they wouldn't have, of course, any um, idea of what the player character did in previous Saints Row games in that different universe but you might see the same personalities and character attributes associated with the, those older characters if they were to be brought in, kind of as a nod to the fans of the game, which were a bit more veteran, let's say. The Saints Row team are also planning on there being three DLCs, which are planned post-launch. Very little is actually known about these expansions so far, but we can definitely expect to hear more about them as we get closer to launch. Now as we go into talking about the characters specifically, we have Nina, which is considered to be the driver, a tinkerer, and someone that really enjoys in general vehicles and would be seen as the main getaway driver for many of the heists of your gang. You've also got Eli, which is a bit chaotic has a mind for business and is ambitious. Apparently this crew member is potentially a little bit untrustworthy so we'll see what happens there. And then we do also have Kevin which is usually startless and is intent on breaking things. Kevin is very loud and has affiliations with the idol gang. He'll handle brute confrontations and that's going to be his main way of dealing with any conflict. Now in terms of Saints Row gameplay, there's a lot of different new additions to the game which are going to shake things up. For example, you can get a wingsuit which allows you to glide around the map um, with ease without having to get into a helicopter or something. Now despite these new additions which we're going to learn more about closer to launch, apparently the devs are going to try to keep the core of the game the same. And so they're going to try to keep the soul of the game from past entries similar in this game. We do also know that the Saints Row map is slated to be the biggest of any Saints Row game so far. And of course, part of that is going to be to do with the extended area beyond just the city itself. We do, as I mentioned as well, have drop in and out co-op, which allows you to join even, I think, mid-mission if you want to which will be nice seamless gameplay and definitely something that people are looking forward to with the Saints Row game. 
Of course, as I've already alluded to as well, there's going to be a bunch of customizability within the game, which allows you to customize your character directly into the way that you want and to be able to be seen in exactly how you envision the character. Now, of course, in previous games of Saints Row, vehicles have always been customizable, but this seems to be taken to a new level with full control this time over color, materials, accessories, decals, and so much more. And so what we're expecting to see here from the garage is a lot of different customization for vehicles. Now, beyond this, we're also expecting to see the Saints Row HQ which is essentially your home base, going to be able to be customized as well. And so we're expecting to see different areas that you can customize. And so maybe you can even level those areas up within your HQ. We're also expecting to see like visual differences, like new statues and potentially, you know, different colored walls and potentially different themes. If you think about something like GTA does that very similarly as well. Of course, as well, you can customize your weapons. It wouldn't be a Saints Row game without being able to do that. And that does include new decals in order to make the weapons feel unique. And also, apparently, you can augment them in new, interesting and bizarre ways. And I look forward to seeing specifically more information about that as we get closer to the release date. Now, I do commend you for getting this far into the video. A lot of people have ADHD brains and they have trouble paying attention. And so I commend you for watching this much of the video. I very much encourage you to subscribe because if you enjoyed this video, you likely will like my other Saints Row videos that I'm putting out. So subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already left a comment, feel free to as well. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what you're looking forward to to the video. Also, feel free to like the video. I'm out, GG. Bye-bye.